Do we start or we wait for something? We're just gonna wait for the participants to come into the okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. Cool. Cool. webinar cool. first. Um, hello everyone. Please um, wait a few seconds more. We're gonna start shortly. We're just waiting for everyone to get in so that no one falls behind. Cool. <clears throat> Okay, everyone, uh, I think we can slowly start and then the rest of the participants that are going to be joining can pick up from where they find us. Um, I hope you're all enjoying uh, Jora Jodi weekend. I hope you're having fun and I hope you're enjoying the sessions that we've prepared for all of you. Um, today here uh, in the Climate Inspiration Corner uh, session, we will be hearing some really, really inspiring projects from uh, different parts of the world. We have scouts joining in, uh, panelists joining in from uh, Croatia, from the Maldives, and from Zimbabwe. Um, so the order of the presentations is going to be, we're going to have Dan first, then we're going to have Paddington from Zimbabwe second, and then we're going to have Ali uh, from the project in the Maldives at the end. All right, I'll let uh, Dan take it away. Dan is from Croatia, but I'll let him introduce himself a little bit more. Hi, Dan. You can start. Uh, thank you. Hi, everyone. Greetings from uh, Croatia. My name is Dan, and I'm the CEO of uh, Croatian Scouts. So I will be talking to you about our uh, Boranka campaign, which we started now five years ago, but it's still running. Uh, and it became uh, the largest European uh, compa voluntary campaign to replant trees burned in wildfires. So uh sit back and relax and uh, i'll just uh, lead you uh short uh through our presentation and after that we'll sh uh, show you a short uh, promotional video about campaign okay so let's go okay so boraka campaign or as we call it in English, paint in the back. Uh, this is a story basically uh, on how we started and run the campaign with uh, practically zero euros or zero dollars budget. And it became the largest European voluntary project to replant trees destroyed in wildfires and also the most awarded nonprofit campaign in Croatia uh, ever. So how it all started, in 2017, Croatia was hit by the worst wildfire season ever. In total, we had more than 6,200 fires that were reported only during the summertime, and fires reached some of the largest Croatian cities. Fortunately, there was no loss of life, but hundreds of kilometers of forests were totally devastated. And in total, we have tens of millions of trees burned, leaving behind nothing but black burned areas. So we as Croatian Scouts, we knew we had to do something. We knew we had to organize something big with thousands of volunteers in order to make a difference. And we knew we had to organize some kind of voluntary reforestation actions, not one, not two, but many, many of them, because there are so many areas that were burned by wildfires. But at the same time, we knew that most people simply do not volunteer. So the question was, in the time of likes and shares on social networks, how do we raise the public awareness and motivate people to actively participate in reforestation actions? And the answer we came up with was, okay, let's try to provide the public with a simple yet inspiring tool which will move them 
And let's give them the power to create life from the ashes. So we came with this idea, and with the help of our strategic partner, the creative agency, Imago Aguilui, we created Boralitsa, a unique crayon made directly from ashes of trees that were burned in those wildfires. We packed Boralitsa into small packages and distributed them for free with the largest creation printed newspaper. And so far, in the last five years, we have distributed more than 200,000 Boralitsa packages to all of Croatia, totally for free. And we ask everyone to draw their trees with our crayons, to take a photo of it and upload it to our Boraka web page. And we said, okay, for every tree planted this way in our virtual forest, scouts and other Boranka volunteers would plant a real one in the nature. And so as the Boranka virtual forest grew, so did the number of real trees planted in the fire burned areas. Soon enough, Whole Croatia started drawing trees from kindergartens, uh, schools, libraries, everyone really joined in. And soon famous Croatian artists, singers, sportsmen, and influencers also helped out and jumped in the whole campaign. So now it was time to start organizing reforestation actions after we moved all Croatian public. So first of all, in the first lines, scouts from all of Croatia joined and led the whole campaign. And soon after that, thousands and thousands of other volunteers actually joined in. Schools, universities, NGOs, all kind of national and international institutions, everyone joined the reforestation campaign. And reforestation suddenly in Croatia became a hit, a, a hit, and everyone wanted to come and help out. Before that, nobody was reforesting from the volunteering po point of view. From Boronka on until today, we have tens and tens new initiatives almost every day. So Boronka actually instigated this. And we have all kinds of institutions joining from Croatian Army, Navy, Red Cross, civil protection agencies, Croatian mountain rescue agencies, fire departments. So volunteers from all over Croatia and even from uh, abroad came to participate in those activities. We also had uh, ambassadors, diplomats who wanted to come to plant trees and to support the scouts in this way as well. After all that buzz, of course, you have the politicians. So we had the Croatian president, Croatian prime minister, also becoming part of the Boranka campaign and coming to plant their own trees as a good example. Of course, the business sector loved the campaign and many companies joined as sponsors and donors, bringing their employees to Boranka to plant trees. And Boronka brand actually became so hot that many companies decided to co-brand their products with the Boronka brand name. So here we see now famous Boronka dusters that run in Croatia. <clears throat> we had a special line from L'Occitane supporting the Boronka initiative. The Radinska water, uh, which every year now has a special line with the Boronka brand on it. Timberland also supporting as the special uh, line that had uh, that was the activation for the Boron campaign. Henkel, DM, and many, many others joined in with, with the different uh, products supporting uh, the campaign. Of course, uh, media buzz around the whole campaign was great, and it still is. And so far, we had more than 1,500 media publications about the campaign from TVs, radio stations, interviews, stories, online, digital, printed media, foreign, domestic, so forth and so on. So like I said, more than 1,500 media publications were published about the Boronka campaign so far. Of course, other uh, famous uh, people in Croatia helped to, to put the stories on there uh, social media about uh, their part 
uh, in the in the Boronka campaign. And uh, because of its effectiveness and creativity, the campaign won already numerous awards in Croatia, but also international. It won the Grand Prix EFI for the most efficient co campaign in EFI Croatia competition. And this was the first time in Croatian history that the nonprofit campaign won the Grand Prix EFI. As far as I remember, it was the first time any scout organization, any NSO, got the gold and the Grand Prix EFI for any particular part of, of uh, this campaign. We also won the Gold Euro EFI, which is the most prestigious European award for marketing efficiency. And it was the first time the Gold EFI came to Croatia and the whole Adriatic region. So Boronka actually won this and brought the first prize of this kind to Croatia. There was a lot of stories about it, of course, in the uh, domestic and international media, once again. And Boronka and Scouts Croatia also winning one of the most prestigious national awards organized by Croatian national television called Pride of Croatia. This year, we were awarded the best long-term campaign in Croatia, again at the EPI competition. And one of the most prominent uh, recognitions was the award European Citizens Prize, which was last year received uh, for the Boronka and Croatian Scouts by the European Parliament for outstanding achievements in promoting European values and unity. So what were the results of the campaign, which is still going on? So we had more than 9,000 volunteers personally coming to uh, burn areas, participated in 33 Boronka reforestation actions so far. They planted more than 100,000 new trees in those areas. And this is how, and this is why Boronka became the largest European volunteer project to replant trees destroyed by wildfires and the most awarded nonprofit campaign in Croatia ever. So we like to say that the Boronka campaign has showed how the love for nature and country can really unite the whole nation and all led by the scouts. So let me now show you a short video about uh, the campaign. There it is. This was just the beginning. This year we need your help. To continue this reforestation and make burnt black areas green again. Okay, here it was, and this is uh, all from me now.
I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I will be here for your questions uh, later and now uh, I give the floor to my uh, other colleagues. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dan, so much. Now we're going to move on to Paddington, but I would just like to point out to all of the viewers, all of our scouts, that you can already start asking questions for any of the uh, panelists, uh, any of our facilitators, and we will get back to the questions during our Q&A session. All right, thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on to Paddington. Hi, Paddington, are you ready? Yep. How are you? I, Hello, everyone. I, I will share my screen for you and share your photos, and then you can either instruct me on changing the photos or I'll just change them by myself. Sure. Um, <laughs> let's get it going. You can share, you can start sharing any of the photos. So, uh, hello friends. Um, just gonna be sharing about a school that's down here, um, somewhere 100 kilometers away from the city center and it's off grid and it's in the rural community. And it's in a community called Murewa community. I don't know how everyone is gonna be able to pronounce that. <laughs> um, so this school has got something about 450 um, students. And now in Zimbabwe, it's a requirement that every student has to do ICT lessons. So without electricity, imagine how to go about ICT lessons without electricity. And each time the school um, wants to do some printing, uh, material uh, to print material for their um, students or class material they they had to walk about 10 kilometers to get to the nearest printing station and imagine when someone wants to just print a simple exam paper one staff was supposed to just walk such a long distance to go get it done and communication was also a bit of a challenge because uh, each time um, a phone battery gave up, they will have to wait until the staff uh, goes back to their homes and recharge because usually most of the staff stays um, about 20 miles from the school. So their homes are connected to the grid. So they have got electricity supply. So they would wait until they got back home, recharge their cell phones, um, even their laptops that they'll be using for the ICT lessons, and then uh, wait for the following day to come and um, use their gadgets. So it was quite a challenge for the staff um, in terms of communication, in terms of delivering the ICT lessons to the classrooms. Also, because of the uh, school environment, they were challenged to also offer night lessons to many rural uh, residents um, who did not get an opportunity to uh, go to school in their um, early ages. But it was also difficult to do the night lessons without the lighting. So that's what inspired our group of scouts to take action. So what we then did is through the Scout Association of Zimbabwe, and we, in partnership with um, uh, Sol Africa, we uh, came with this idea to go uh, do the solar educational activities with the school so they can know and understand how to fully harness the power of the sun and also help them with the installation, a simple solar installation. Uh, so here on the photo, we see part of the educational activities where we um, help people understand uh, the power of the sun through the solar thermal uh, and they get to do the solar cooking uh, practice and then they also get to make the sunglasses Ooh, yeah, out of paper uh, just to lay the foundation on what simple things we could use the sun even though we are not connected to the grid supply and even we get to had a chance to talk to the community, the, the parents, which you see in this photo here, and showing them um, how much um, things we can do from the sun. 
so they will be able also to um, benefit from the from this renewable energy source. And after that, uh, we went on to do the actual installation, uh, which you see in the photo one of our solar ambassadors uh, installing um, a simple solar light. Uh, you're gonna see it in the next photos to be shared on the screen. And um, the rest of the team also helping with the actual solar installation. You can see them up the roof. Um, so what we then did with the school was to give them a simple solar system that could power up the school. So the school staff could charge their cell phones could do simple printing and not have to walk 10 kilometers to go to the nearest printing station and uh, lighting during the night. So they could also offer the night lessons uh, for the community and also for, for just security. You can see one of the blocks in one of the photos um, during the night that has got light. Um, and from there, the community Yeah, there you can see the, the classroom and the lights, and this is during the night. Uh, so from, from there, the community uh, started appreciating much of um, using the solar energy in their everyday lives uh, as we did these solar educational activities from the young ones through to the, to the adults. So yeah, this is not only um, one thing that we did, it inspired many ideas and many projects. And from this one uh, up to date, we have installed in four more schools. Um, this last weekend, we were in another rural community where we also did a similar project. So it, these activities are um, spreading countrywide and many scouts are also uh, getting inspired and doing similar actions and helping our communities use um, solar energy as a, as a choice. So yeah, um, this is much of what we, we did with some of the communities here in Zimbabwe using the solar energy. So likewise, if you guys have got any questions, um, I'll be here um, with my team to just um, help each other share our experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Paddington, so much. Um, again, I remind you all scouts that the Q&A is uh, open for any questions along the way, but we will be addressing these questions at a later point during the Q&A part. All right, uh, for the sake of time, we will move on to Ali from the Maldives with their inspiring project. Ali, take it away. All right, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Ali, I'm from the Maldives and uh... Um, I'm a scout leader of Muiddin Scouts, and we're going to share our project called Muraka Pudding. Um, let me sh share my screen. So, so basically, uh, Muraka Pudding um, literally means uh, in our language like coral kids. So um, this is uh, some of our scouts just after they finish their open water diving, um, taking a picture around four meters under the water. Um, so actually the story comes, starts from tsunami. So we were really badly affected in the box, Boxing Day tsunami. Um, like more than hundred people died, but to be honest, our whole economy was destroyed. Um, tourism and fishing and uh, a lot of islands were entirely destroyed. Um, but at the time in UK, in uh, Hertfordshire Scouts, they were raising um, uh, money for the Boxing Day tsunami. So this was a long, long time back. And in 2015, World Scout Jamboree, um, uh, myself, uh, I worked with Michael, who is also from uh, Hertfordshire Scouts. 
and a nice friendship built. And he was like, um, um, they have some funds and uh, how, um, and they need to utilize in, in obviously in a tsunami affected country and could we partner? So that's where it came. And I guess like when you hear the Maldives, um, everyone hears about the white beaches and the crystal clear waters, but also at the same time, I guess, um, you hear about this as well, that we're going to soon to disappear from the world map. And uh, obviously we are at the forefront um, of the climate change. Um, um, we are, and we, we can see the effects. And if you look into how we are formed as an island, so we're, basically we are formed from the corals and these islands are formed and also corals give us the protection from the waves and also it gives us a livelihood through the reefs, um, through tourism and through fishing. So um, people who um, like have interacted with us, uh, um, early divers or divers, they were saying like before um, every decade we get a El Nino, um, basically the coral bleaching. So it's something like uh, once in every 10 years, but because uh, currently now it's something like we are always um, kind of looking into every year um, end of our um, hot monsoon that the coral bleaching might happen and so this is something which has become yearly and so for us these corals means um, our survival so this is where we thought okay um, why not we do um, something with the corals and so we are based in Willy Male, which is part of the Greater Male. So this is uh, where I come from, um, this small island. And if you if you can see an island far away, that's where the capital is. So we are just like um, eight minutes away from the capital, uh, part of the Greater Male. And because this is the Greater Male area, um, there's a lot of development work going on. You can see a big harbor there. So it has really much um, negatively impacted our house reef as well. So there's something like 20% coral cover. So this is, and the white uh, beach you are seeing, that is um, the beach we normally, where we work and we work in the house reef. And so right now we had an amazing partner with the UK um, from the scouts from Herefordshire, us with the scout group. And then obviously this is not something which we could do. Um, um, we didn't have the expertise. Um, of this kind of work or the resources. And this is where um, really two amazing local partners um, came into the program. So I remember uh, first we approached the Save the Beach, a local NGO, which does a lot of coral restoration um, work and uh, coral management monitoring work, um, not just in uh, Widemala, but across the Maldives. Um, gave them a call. It didn't take even a second. They were like, okay, we are in. And so being the expertise, they normally run the program for us um, from scratch, um, getting our kids to learn about um, everything what we're doing. And also at the same time, we needed resources. I mean, uh, we obviously need uh, to carry out this work um, to be divers. And we got another local partner um, who is sponsoring uh, with the Herefordshire Scout sponsoring um, our diving, uh, our scouts divings, given the resources and uh, we, with the two local partners and with the, um, our international partner, we managed to start this. So we started it in September, 2019. So obviously this is a picture of where we were um, doing some dry lessons, you know, getting the kids to know about the marine life, the importance of the corals, the importance for our existence, our survival. And uh, well, 99% um, of the Maldives is uh, um, water, but a lot of, um, kids, to be honest, doesn't know how to swim. So this is where actually we start. We learn every year when we get new scouts, we teach them how to swim. Um, we get them to snorkel. Um, we take them out to the reef, get them more confidence, um, how to use the fins, mask, and slowly we start. And with that, then we start what we call is a, a reef check. So that, this is kind of a protocol to check um, the healthiness of the reef. So there are like some um, the kids learn about the key indicator fishes to look for. They do um, benthic surveys, the floor surveys to see um, like the, um, what kind of, uh, do we have corals or do we have rubbles or is it like a dead coral or a recently killed coral? Is it just sand? And, uh, and yes, always when we start, we 
actually start with a small beach cleanup. We just walk around the beach, take any litters and dump them. Um, this is some of our kids um, going through the reef check protocol, learning about indicator fishes and also teaching the new kids. So, and this is where two of our scouts actually doing a reef check in our house reef. So um, what Aya is checking is like to see, um, so this actually gives like a benthic survey and uh, to see what we have. And we started obviously diving with our amazing partners in uh, Mudubula Dive Center. And it was a great experience for the kids. Right now we have six um, petty open water divers and hopefully we'll get more. We'll be starting our um, next batch early next year. And uh, so also it's not just very hard work. Sometimes we do fun dives as well. And uh, this is after some work, we're doing some uh, fun dive. And also it's a lot of hard work. So they need to be really good swimmers, um, dragging these nurseries, uh, dragging these frames all the way to the nurseries. And also uh, we do like two types of um, coral planting. This is uh, um, for the first time, um, the baby from the Save the Beach teaching our kids how to do um, coral planting in, in plugs. Yeah. It's good. And this is uh, um, kids actually free diving and uh, plant uh, and planting the coral fragments uh, into the frames. So these are the like frags we, we get from like disease coral small fragments we find in our own house reef. And this is also more, more of the planting. And here, um, like uh, two of our scouts are actually uh, monitoring the uh, monitoring the corals which they planted. They're actually checking their sizes, and uh, so it's it's a constant thing with the nursery. So and uh, also recently now there's a big bridge coming up, and uh, we um, moved a lot of corals from where, from the construction site to our nursery area. And uh, this was a quite a huge work and all of our scouts were involved in it. follow us more on uh, our work um, from TikTok or from Instagram in Mohiddin Scouts. And if you have any questions, please ask me. And I guess a lot of you are waiting for the code and here's the code. Thank you, Ali, so much. Uh, the code will be there uh, displayed still. I, um, I'm going to ask Ali to keep the, <laughs> the screen share on. Um, so that all of our scouts can uh, write it down. I will be typing it into the chat box so that everyone can see. All right, um, now we're going to go to the Q&A part. I see that uh, in the Q&A section here, Dan has been pretty busy answering some questions. Um, I see some really exciting questions here uh, about the first project. Uh, if anyone has more questions, fire away. We're open now for any questions. Um, before we before we move on to any uh, other questions, I would like to go back to Dan because I see here uh, a, a a really interesting question that he answered um, about how would someone from South Africa get one of these crayons. 
Um, so which is a really nice question about um, a call to action. So Dan, could you please elaborate a little bit more about how someone not from Croatia could uh, get one of these crayons? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, I have already uh, received an email from Keegan, so I will I will answer him shortly. But uh, it's no problem. I mean, we we can uh, we have been distributing uh, those crayons to to all of the world so uh, so far, and uh, it will be no problem to uh, to send it to to South Africa as well. Uh, one one other interesting uh, po point of this uh, campaign uh, is that. Uh, a week ago, we we had a delegation from uh, Macedonia Scouts actually uh, in Croatia doing their study visit for the Boronka campaign, and uh, we uh, worked together on this and helped them uh, in a way to get the the grant uh, from uh, the U.S. Embassy, for instance, and uh, we brought them to Croatia uh, to see how how the work is done, how it's all organized, and we actually introduced. Uh, that Boronka is uh, expanding uh, to Macedonia, uh, where it will be led by Macedonian scouts. So there is always uh, uh, a means uh, and, and ways to, to expand uh, a project, and uh, uh, we are always open to any, any kind of uh, help, support, uh, questions, uh, either being uh, sending the materials via email or post or, or uh, receiving. Uh, uh, scout groups uh, to Croatia. We are really uh, happy and glad uh, to help uh, to 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 share the knowledge that we have gained from this and the experience. And uh, like I said, uh, we we are always open to 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 any questions and to uh, actually disseminate the the whole uh, story, which was started by the scouts here. And fortunately, it's actually spreading now around. Uh, around the uh, other countries. Amazing. There's another question here that just popped in, uh, Dan, of it yeah, was from I'm an anonymous not... attendee. <laughs> How long do trees take to grow from a seed to a full tree? Uh, it really depends from uh, kind to kind. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, it, 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 it takes a lot, you know. It takes at least... Uh, 10 to 20 years uh, for a tree to be, uh, you know, to, to grow to, so you, you can see it's a, it's a, it's a grown tree, even, even though a one year old uh, uh, seedling is also a tree, but it's, you know, it's uh, young, uh, but uh, it does, it does uh, uh, take quite a long time. And it's, it's always uh, uh, horrific when you see that forests, which are hundreds of years old, uh, disappear in a couple of minutes. Uh, so it's a great effort, actually, you know, to put back some forest uh, back back to life. Uh, but at the same time, we uh, are always looking looking forward to to see the the forest we have uh, uh, planted now in I don't know ten or fifteen years how how they will grow. And the following question, we're going to go back to Ali. Um, Ali, how long is Maldives expected to exist? Uh, what can be done to prevent uh, or slow down it from disappearing? Well, uh, to start with, I, I, um, I really hope that we'll exist. And uh, um, it's, it's a different, uh, it's, it's very different. I guess there's a lot of theories, but yeah, but apparently if any countries disappear, we'll be the first with the uh, um, global warming, uh, with the climate change. And what can we do? Obviously we need to um, reduce our temperatures and that's something we need to do because uh, um, like, like from the Maldives, we really don't produce that much of uh, greenhouse gases, but we are the um, first to be affected. So it needs a worldwide effort um, to reduce um, our production of greenhouse gases and save um, small lying islands like the Maldives. Yeah. Thank you, Ali. Um, if we have any other questions, please do uh, ask away. We have five more minutes remaining in this section, um, and we'll be answering questions within those five minutes. So please ask away. Uh, while we wait for questions, I would like to go back to Paddington. Um, and there's a question from my side. 
Um, Paddington, can you share some numbers uh, from the project about um, how many um, scouts or how many um, children were impacted in those villages that you were uh, implementing the projects in? Uh, can you come again? How many? Hi, Paddington. I was I was asking a question about the numbers of impacted uh, scouts or children in the project who were implementing in the projects. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, so we we reached out to scouts and non-scouts, and we had about three hundred scouts um, that we reached out to through the project and about 400 to 500 uh, community members, because uh, they, um, the scout parents were involved and uh, the community leadership, and um, we extended our invitation to the rest of the community. So we had so many people attending and also people who benefited indirectly. Yeah, it's about 400 to 500, so. Yeah, about 200 scouts, 400 community uh, members, non-scouts. Thank you, Paddington, for your answer. That is uh, really inspiring. That's a lot of community members that were impacted by the project positively. All right. So I see no more questions in the Q&A side. Uh, there's just one. Just Um, so we have a question, um, how we can stop them logging grass tree. I, I'm guessing you wanted to say, uh, trees. Um, is this a question for, um, Dan? Uh, hold on. How can we stop some logging trees? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll put the answer here in writing, right? That's a, that's a good question. You, you, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, logging is uh, at least in 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 Europe. It's it's uh, you know it's uh, there are le legal terms on uh, uh, how logging can be done and uh, into into which uh, which effect. But uh, so in in Croatia, you you can't. Uh, I mean, you have to plant more trees than than you log them. I don't know how it's in 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 other countries, but. Uh, uh, it it needs to be protected by the law for for uh, for what we know uh, this is the best uh, part. But uh, you you can probably never prevent the unlawful uh, logging. So that's that's a big problem, probably in in, in some uh, parts of the world, especially the the, the Amazons and 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 so on. Uh, like I said, in Croatia and Europe, we we have it lawfully fixed, and it's not actually that easy to um to cut down uh, trees uh, uh besides besides the law and besides the quota that that uh, uh, exists so actually the fires uh and and the climate change effects which affects the trees uh are a much bigger problem uh in europe especially in the mediterranean All right. Thank you so much for your answer, and thank you for the question, Scouts. Um, okay, so, so if we do not have any questions incoming, uh, I would like to close the session soon. We have one minute remaining. I would like to extend my uh, gratitude to all of our panelists. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Paddington. And thank you, Ali, for sharing these inspiring projects with us. Um, I think I speak for all of the all of the scouts that are present that uh, a lot of inspiration could be taken away from this session and from these projects. Um, and I've learned a lot about um, all of these different issues in uh, your countries, respectively. Okay. okay. There we go. Um, so we'll wrap up now, scouts. Once again, your challenge code for this activity is V G U V. Oh, VGUVO. Okay, I have posted it in the chat box. So you can go ahead and copy it and paste it down in uh, the place where you need to get badges. We will move on now to the following session. Thank you all for joining.
Thank you once again for all of our panelists and have a lovely rest of your weekends and the Dota Dodi. Thank you. Goodbye.